version of the B-58 was delivered to the Air Force in August of 1960. Its assignment, the training of Air Force pilots in the handling of the Mach 2 B-58. The trainer proved to be a dependable airplane from the beginning of its service. In the first two months of its service, TB-58 No. 1 qualified six pilot instructors and seven B-58 pilots. The story of how this special airplane came into being begins in August of 1959 when the Air Force assigned Convair the task of developing a total of four trainer aircraft. In the interest of overall economy, it had been determined to convert research and development aircraft to the trainer configuration, incorporating such alterations as might be necessary. As a preliminary step, a mock-up was constructed to show just how the conversion airplane would do the job. Incorporated were various changes arrived at through design studies. These included rearrangement of the second station, additions to the control system, as well as changes in instrumentation and cockpit lighting. The new second station occupies the space which formerly housed the electronic equipment for the bombing navigation system. This system, together with the active and passive defense systems, have been removed from the TB-58 as unnecessary for flights devoted exclusively to pilot training. The elimination of these systems brought about a considerable saving in the cost of the trainer. In the new second station, we find the pilot instructor's seat set 40 inches behind the first station and 10 inches off-center. In the bulkhead between the two stations, windows have been installed on either side of the ejection rail housing. In October of 1959, research and development airplane number 11 was transferred from the flight test pool to the conversion program. With the acceptance of the elements of redesign required in the trainer B-58 by the Air Force, the actual conversion of a Hustler got underway. With the conversion work complete, airplane 11 was ready for ground checkout. The schedule called for ground run-ups of duly installed engines, low-speed taxiing to evaluate ground handling characteristics and nose wheel steering, a high-speed taxi test to check the dual control system brakes and drag chute, and visibility checks from the second station. After satisfactorily completing its ground checkout, Airplane 11, now TB number one, the first of four B-58 trainers, was ready for its first flight. Roger, 670, are you ready for takeoff? 670, Roger. You take off on the right side of the active. The wind's 160 degrees at 5 knots, cleared for takeoff. Did you change it? On 10 May 1960, B 58 trainer number one lifted from the Carswell runway at a takeoff weight, lacking pod, of 97,000 pounds. Other Convair shakedown flights were scheduled for the trainer while carrying a pot. You call high key. All right, you're welcome. The crew performed regular test flight functions with emphasis on qualifying systems unique to the trainer, especially the dual control system. The transfer of flight control from station to station was practiced. In actual training, the pilot qualifying for the B-58 will get preliminary general indoctrination while flying in the second station with the instructor occupying the pilot station. After this, the in-training B-58 pilot will move to the front seat for the major portion of his flight checkout, a procedure comparable to that employed in earlier aircraft having a tandem seat arrangement. The instructor in the second station will have, of course, an override capability at all times. While provided with these arrangements purely for training purposes, the TB has flying qualities identical to those of the operational B-58. For the prospective B-58 pilot without previous experience in Delta Wing aircraft, some readjustment may be required in his early acquaintance with the Hustler. But during his carefully supervised program, he will soon discover that the stability inherent in this plan form, the ease of control augmented by its highly automatic equipment, the experience of sustained Mach 2 flight without strain have given him full confidence in himself and his aircraft. With the imparting of this confidence, the chief goal of the non-tactical configuration of the B-58, today the TB-58 is achieving this goal quickly, economically, and dependably.